Today on X Play Dinosaur Robots, Preteen Spies, and Kingdom Hearts 2. Come run the hidden pine trails of the forest. Oh, I understand your concern. It's game time. Except no substitutes, it's Adam Sessler and Morgan Webb. Greetings, friends, and welcome to X-Play. It's a special day, a day fanboys across the country have been desperately awaiting. Three words. Kingdom Hearts 2. And we've got a preview later on in the show. But first, we've got other games that aren't Kingdom Hearts 2, like Dice, an anime-based game about robot dinosaurs. The anime, robots, and dinosaurs. It's the triple crown of things beloved by guys who smell slightly like pee. And later in the show, we've got a review of 80 Days, because you've got to respect any game with that much hot air ballooning. And a review of Kim Possible, Kim Municator, for our audience of 12-year-old girls. Be sure do love to gossip and exclude others. Yes. But first up, Dinosaur Robots. Here's a review of Dice. Yeah. Oh, um, oh, what is this? Oh, yeah, yeah, I remember. It's one of those anime shows that has a cult following of 50 or so introverted shut-ins with pizza roll breath and cactus cooler stains on their Morrissey Hot Topic t-shirts. And when there's a geeky cult, it sadly leads to a quickie game. I understand your concern. Which is where Dice comes in. Oh, sweet child of mine, Dice is so bad, it's leaving a nasty stench on my PS2. Oh! There are robot dinosaurs here, which can transform into vehicles to race through the game with. Wow, it's like Christmas all year round. If you're Jewish. Oh! Unbelievable! Along with your trusty dinosaur slash car slash who gives a sh you get a trusty little robot pal to help beat off those completely meaningless right. villains. <laughs> That's useless. It almost makes you forget how pointless this game is. Missions are simple. Go do this or that and fight enemies on levels that blend into each other after time. Simple fighting games shouldn't be this boring, should they? That's a very interesting question. Which leads to the big battle, where you can fight a giant doesn't matter who likes to clap his hands and spew bird flu all over. Oh! Along the way, there are simple, slow-paced races to get through. Wow! And modes where robot dinosaurs can fight each other. Awesome! It's as pointless as a metaphor I'm too bored to come up with. How rude of you! Is it as bad as we're telling you it is? Yes. Yes, it is. But where else can you fight giant frogs? Or a headless robot with big feet? Or killer Zambonis? or giant frogs. It can only happen in dice. Hickory dickory dock, this game sucks. Oh! Thanks, Dice. Now go back to 1989 where you belong. Oh! The only people this game will appeal to are desperate, sad little Dice fans. And even then, it's a stretch. Excuse my lack of enthusiasm. You like dice? Good for you. Enjoy with my blessing. But it does not mean that you'll like this game. <sighs> it's truly unfortunate that it's come down to this. Yes, it is. We give dice a lowly one oh. out of five. Mother Goose, remember her? I f***ed her. Oh! Like the dinosaurs, I always considered Andrew Dice Clay to be one of evolution's mistakes. You know, this game is clearly just a rip-off of the Transformers Generation 1 Dinobots. And there's something pretty pathetic about ripping off something that sucked. And the Dinobots did suck. Hey! The Dinobots were badasses. They survived an attack from Unicron. That's great, Morgan. Well, lots of cartoons have been turned into games, but so few of them involve naked mole rats or the cast of designing women. Mm. You know, Kim Possible delivers on those fronts. Maybe only on those fronts. Yep, here's a review of Kim Possible, Communicator. Uh. 
There's nothing cooler than being a secret agent. Well, maybe shooting your best friend in the face with birdshot, but there isn't much that's cooler than being a secret agent. Straight from the NSA and into your sweaty hands, it's Kim Possible Communicator. But before you get into the wet work, there's a little bit of spy business. To activate your game, you have to give your DS a little thumbprint ID. Feel like a real spy. Your name matches terrorist watch list Terrorist watch list? I love when Nintendo uses biometric scanning. Kim Possible is a platformer. Your grab bag of Catwoman moves propel Kim through a volcano lair, a moon base, and other expected espionage accoutrement. Like a department store. That's where Mr. and Mrs. Smith didn't have an ending. But I hope you don't like fighting enemies. Kim's got a dancer's legs, but a coward's heart when it comes to going up against big men that want to hurt her. Is it safe? What? Is it safe? I'm just an X-Play intern. Is it safe? I don't get it. Is it safe? Yeah, yeah it is. Teach him. So maybe Kim can't take a punch, but don't think that will slow you down for long. This game is so easy and so short, it takes only a few hours to complete. And that's if you spend half the time drinking. Which I do. It's got some flair for a DS game, the animations are fluid, and the camera moves through the 3D levels keep Kim Possible from being too obvious about what she is. A damn dirty side-scrolling platformer. The by rote double jumping is broken up by picking locks with your stylus and lifting your parachute with a puff on the DS microphone. I am a patient man. Call Adam or Morgan. He'll tell you who I am. <laughs> Your friends cannot save you now. Make no mistake, you will not leave this place alive. Julio del Montalban. Julio? Kim Possible has a number of cute outfits to change into, and you'll occasionally control a naked mole rat. That's right, a naked mole rat. But the shocking brevity of this title and its utter averageness in every way will come as a blow to fans of the show. Adam, where are you? Did you hear something? Never mind. Kim Possible Communicator nabs a half ass two out of a half ass five. Possible's a big-eyed tart. You know, you've said that before. The only political opinion I really care about. Mm, yeah, you know, I mainly just wish the government would spend more money on Head Start programs for baby unicorns. But they're so cute before they learn to read. No, I know, but Adam, reading is the first step to knowledge, and knowledge is power. So, you want baby unicorns to read so they'll become megalomaniacal tyrants? Adorable ones. After the break... I want to die! Sci-fi colonialism. Seems as if fate has parted on me today. Station comes through. It's Adam Sessler and Morgan Webb. Bienvenidos a Explain. You know, the world is a fascinating place full of cultures. And most of these cultures are different. Real different. For instance, in some places, people refer to soda as pop. And in other places, it's legal for a man to get married to livestock. Now, many games celebrate these cultures, from exterminating every Taoist on the planet in Civilization IV... ...to Oddworld's searing look at Gluckon Amudicon violence. But for a splashy Victorian look at cultural clichés, here's our review of 80 Days. No, no, no idea which way to go. Hey, the Bengals got back together. Wait, that's not the Bengals. That's not even Tony Basil. Ugh, 
This travesty of a musical parody is 80 days. Run like a hero! But you won't be seeing any Jackie Chan around here. The game is based on Jules Verne's famous 19th century novel, Around the World in 80 Days. In this version, your cast is Oliver, a strapping young lad whose incredibly good looks are rivaled only by his incredibly emotionless line readings. What luck to have such a harebrained uncle. Thanks to him, I feel adventure ready to happen to me. Ooh, don't sound too excited. Huh? Huh? What's weird is that this game plays more like 80 Days The Next Generation. Characters from the novel keep popping up for cameos that reference events from the original story. Is that dandy amateur with his insulting trip around the world? What's even more strange is that 80 Days frequently stoops to record-scratchingly lowbrow humor, which feels totally out of place here. You're exactly the type of lad I've been looking for. Sorry, I, I don't swing that way. And what's up with this copy of Bad Boys? Hmm, maybe this is Rudolph Valentino's cabin. As you can probably tell by now, the voice acting in this game is terrible. I want to die! But we'd like to offer a special nomination for what has to be the least convincing Italian accent of all time. But, Camadora, I am an expert on this bird. Fortunately, the game lets you pilot vehicles like airships and magic carpets, which is a nice change of pace. In terms of graphics, 80 Days looks surprisingly crisp for an adventure game. The robust control scheme allows you to run around in full 3D, which is a refreshing change for the genre. Unfortunately, you'll spend most of your time running degrading fetch quests for strangers you encounter. I need to find the seven chalices of the seven cursed kings, but I can't move that well. Also, the game has a bunch of self-referential jokes that point out how bad it is. All right, now I have to find the missing part of the radar. It seems I'm always looking for something. Dear makers of 80 Days, just because you point out the fact that you're making me run dumb fetch quests doesn't excuse the fact that you're making me run dumb fetch quests. Besides, do I look like somebody who has nothing better to do than spend his time helping everybody, like in those blasted Frogwares video games? Here's an idea. If you become so bored with your own game that you're making jokes about it, maybe it's time to come up with something fresh or original for us to play. Until that happens, this game is strictly for the most hardcore of hardcore adventure game fans. It seems as if fate has farted on me today. You got that right. 80 Days gets a 2 out of 5. Run like a hero! That made me hate music. <laughs> this game is a great insult to a great artist. I know, Jackie Chan is a genius. He's like Charlie Chaplin or Buster Keaton. Except he hits people. It's interesting the way they always try to put action stars in comedy films. Yeah, like Vin Diesel in The Pacifier. What would it be like if they did the opposite? Mm, like Carrot Top saving the world from nuclear annihilation? I see, I'll take the annihilation. Mm. Up next. <laughs> Darling, it's better down where it's wetter. Under the sea. It's Adam Sessler and Morgan Webb. Back in the 80s, Disney made a lot of really bad movies. You thought Tarzan was bad? Go rent yourself The Black Cauldron. There are episodes of Digimon that are better than The Black Cauldron. But back in 1989, they finally made an amazing movie with really, really good songs. Songs about sex and complaining and eating the main characters. Songs that have finally found their way into a video game. The sequel to the fanboy crack that was 2002's Kingdom Hearts. Unfortunately, the English language version of Kingdom Hearts 2 isn't out yet. Yeah. So we've taken the Japanese version of the game and directly translated the lyrics from the Under the Sea rhythm game level. And the lyrics are interesting, yeah. to say the least. Let's take a look. Daddy, 
That's what it would have looked like if I'd taken LSD in 1989. Various creatures are playing instruments. That's a line you don't hear in many songs. But the song did emphasize one important point. We surface dwellers have sand. There is a sand gap. Let's see them try to create sand castles. Yes. <laughs> Actually, there's a bunch of sand at the bottom of the ocean. And the song said the cheerful Beguine rhythm belongs to the sea. Mm. What does that mean? I always thought the cheerful begin rhythm belonged to Nat King Cole. Which just takes me back to my original assumption, Japanese doesn't make any sense. Mm. It was fun to learn that the Japanese word for jazz band is jazz band. What's the American word? Oh. In a moment, <laughs> fanboys crap themselves. <laughs> Corporation. It's Adam Sessler and Morgan Webb. Welcome back to X Play. Well, fanboys, you've been waiting for it. You've been dying for it. The wholesome goofiness of Goofy, the androgynous androgyny of Squall, the horrible voice acting of child robot Haley Joel Osment. Whatever it was, Kingdom Hearts sold big. Pretty soon, you guys will get to hear what Haley's voice sounds like after puberty. But until then, we'll give you a taste of the Japanese version. Here's our preview of Kingdom Hearts 2. The original Kingdom Hearts was a first for the video game industry. Now, most expected this strange concoction of Disney characters and effeminate square lackeys to mix about as well as Dick Cheney and Buckshot. Come on, you knew it was coming. Kingdom Hearts became the poster boy for fusing two high-profile properties together into one product and sold like tweezers in cactus land. With that kind of coin sitting on the table, who can blame Square Enix for milking that Mickey one more time? Kingdom Hearts 2 was just released in Japan, and if you dug the first game, clear the calendar to rekindle your relationship with the couch. The game begins with a three-hour tutorial that finds a brand new hero, Roxas, regretting his triptastic youth. Eventually, he stumbles upon the stars of the first game hanging in cryogenic chambers. Goofy. And the game proper begins. We don't want to spoil too much, but we will say that once again you find yourself in control of Sora as he attempts to unravel a mystery stretched across some of Disney's most vaunted locales. The gameplay is still a more strategic version of Zelda. There's plenty of platform hopping and more than enough opportunity to turn enemies into tumblers at the mercy of the Keyblade. The stodgy camera from the first Kingdom Hearts has been rack-focused and puts up much less of a fight, but you'll still find yourself making mincemeat of your controller as you hack and slash through Disney's stash. Pummeling these fiendish cartoons allows you to level up your revolving party of three. You can even set their behaviors to take Sora's back in the game's sporadic tussles. 
Contact-sensitive boss fights come fast and frequent. And with the ability to summon majestic creatures like Chicken Little, the magic is just as quirky. Just like the first game, you can use the gummy ship to travel from one spot to the next. The choice of characters runs the Disney gamut. One minute you're in the grayscale world of Steamboat Willie. And the next, you're chatting with Johnny Depp's character from Pirates of the Caribbean. What was his name again? Captain Jack Sparrow. That's right. Hey, there's something to be said for playing the Japanese version of Kingdom Hearts 2 and hearing the characters wax the vernacular. <laughs> Donald Duck's not too shabby either. You want me to what your what? <laughs> Kingdom Hearts 2 is just a couple of months away. In the meantime, why not play the excellent GBA game, Chain of Memories, to get up to speed? We know you're excited, but don't lose your head. Japanese speaking Donald Duck creeps me mm -hmm. out. You know, I'm irked by the fact that the game allows you to merge with Goofy. Disney characters shouldn't be merging with anyone. The Japanese are really good at making things seem cute that would just seem creepy from anyone else. But they need to realize that not all Disney characters are created equal. No one cares about Chicken Little. The Angela Lansbury from Bed Knobs and Broom Six, that's who I'd like to merge with. It's very personal, Adam. Yeah, I know. I have a rash. <laughs> oh. Itches.